Hey, Zach. Hey, Martin. Hi, guys. I miss you guys. Soon, babies. I promise. Good morning. Welcome to Central Florida. And your host today is Jay, a.k.a. The Naked One. So, I'm going today to meet up with the girls. We're going to go for a short ride. We're celebrating that I finished AP grading. I, I grade AP exams. I teach microeconomics. So, uh, I've been uh, locked away for a couple of weeks. And we figured we'd do a short ride. It's going to be short today because... Um, it's Father's Day, so um, I've been buying up helmets and unboxing them, reviewing them, and I figured, well, you know, one of the things that was very confusing in the beginning was ratings, helmet ratings, like DOT, ECE, Snell, and I figured it would be a great time to give you a short little video on helmet ratings and the differences and why some people push some and things like that now I'm not gonna tell you what to get everything depends on the type of writing you do and what you think is best for your pocket and things like that um, so I guess the best thing to do is to start with a little bit of history um, motorcycles come out in the late 1800s 19th century right there and Helmets didn't really exist. People wore like leather, leather caps and, and goggles and they called it a day. So, in 1914, Eric Gardner, he's a physician, he's studying the head injuries that are occurring from a motorcyclist. And he finds out that he comes out with a design that is kind of like a canvas covered in shellac and some goggles. That's in 1914. And in the Isle of Man races, they are required to actually wear them. So helmets start coming into play back in 1914. However, it was mostly something you saw with races or race car uh, races, race cars. <laughs> Well, races, got something dead in the road and some birds to fight over. So, some, sorry, motorcyclists that were racers, okay? So it wasn't something that was too keen on the streets. People continued to wear their leather caps and goggles all to the day. In 1935, there is this great military officer. You might have heard of him. His name is T.E. Lawrence aka Lawrence of Arabia. He is World War I military, deployed to Arabia a few times, comes back home, quite at home, close to home, has a motorcycle accident and he dies from massive head injuries. This doctor he carries uh, basically felt bad for him and started researching what was happening. He figured, oh, um, they could have um, saved his life if he had a helmet on. And the pudding bowl is poor. So the pudding bowl goes into effect in 1935. People are still not crazy about it. Um, 1950s, you start seeing a, a new design. It comes from C.F. Lombard. C.F. Lombard starts thinking, hey, helmets should be uh, energy absorbing. So therefore, he starts working with the liners and different types of uh, uh, materials for the top and things like that. And at the same time, Roy Victor, who has a good friend die from a motorcycle accident, uh, develops the type of helmet that you now see by Bell with liners and they absorb energy and things like that. Bell actually comes out, picks up that design and comes out with their Bell 500. Starts catching popularity. Later on in the late 50s, 
we have Pete Snell, who is a race car uh, driver. He rolls his car and ends up dying from head injuries. And he was wearing a helmet. So, what happens is the Pete, uh, Pete's family and friends, they get together and they start the Snell Memorial Foundation. It is the 50s. We still do not have helmet laws and regulations. In fact, I think the first country to adopt any helmet laws was Australia. The states start adopting helmet laws because it was required by Fed law. They wouldn't get any uh, funding for their highways, federal funding, unless they had a helmet law. So every state, with the exception of three states, actually adopts helmet laws. States are Illinois, Iowa, and New Hampshire. You should know the laws of your state when it comes to helmets. Uh, it's no longer required that the law was repealed, but most states will have some type of helmet law. So here in Florida, anybody under the age of 21 must be wearing a helmet. And if you do not wear a helmet, you must carry at least $10,000 worth of insurance. You saw me, I was like, yeah. damn it! And I, I just you were like, forget it, I'm going. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I, I was like, screw you, you're you're dead. <laughs> From now on, call me the squirrel killer. <laughs> Alright guys, we finished our ride, but we're on our way to visit a one of the nefarious four members that couldn't make it today. We're gonna drop something off to her. So ratings. Let's talk about ratings. You have your three major ones, which are going to be your DLT, ECE, and Snell. There are other ones I want you to be aware of. You have um, ratings in Australia. Japan has their own ratings and things like that. But when it comes to safety ratings, the three big ones that we're concerned with are going to be DLT, ECE, and Snell. In the United States, if you wear a helmet, your helmet must be DLT. Well, DLT testing is considered basic. But it's actually very, very good. They use a heavy anvil system, high um, impacts, energy absorption. They're looking at penetration, impact. They're looking at field of view, how much is impaired by your visor. They look at the retention system. And it's a pretty fairly decent, decently done testing. However, the problem isn't the testing. It's how you achieve the certifications. So in this situation, every helmet manufacturer must self-test and certify that they have met DLT regulations and then they get to put a nice DLT sticker on their helmet the National Highway Safety Administration the enforcement uh, part of DLT goes around and randomly checks helmets to see if they meet DLT requirements basically it's like random drug testing so if you get caught what ends up happening is you can be charged a fine of up to $5,000 per helmet that's being marketed. It's a hefty fine. And here's what happens. The goal is that to bring fear about that uh, fine will keep manufacturers in producing a helmet that is DLT rated. So technically you could be riding around with a helmet that has never been tested. A step up from that goes to ECE. Now ECE adds in a few more tests, barrage more, and they, they also go into like abrasion resistance and things like that. The only con with ECE is that they test at lower G's than um, the American counterpart does. So our European cousins tend to have lower speed accidents than our American brothers and sisters. So that's the only con is that the speed testing is a little lower. The other thing about their testing is that they only strike the helmet once and they usually go only for the weak points. So a manufacturer could just beef up the areas 
that are considered weak and they'd be able to pass those tests. That's the fear with the ECE. Now, on top of that, comes Snell. Now, Snell is creme de la creme. It's the cream of the crop, or rise to the top, sorry. Um, they are a private foundation that manufacturers pay to have their helmets tested. And if you're going to pay to get your helmet tested, you might as well make a helmet that is actually going to be passing those tests. The control over the test is very high. Uh, the person testing the helmet can hit the helmet as many times as he wants. They use different head forms, things like that. So it's actually, they put those helmets through a, a, a much more rigorous test. So when you have a um, snow rated helmet, you have a helmet that's been tested very, very well. Oh, one thing, backing up, ECE. In order to have an ECE rating, every helmet must be tested. So if it has an ECE rating, the helmet is guaranteed to be tested. Same thing with the snouts, not the DOT. There is a new player, his name is Sharp. Sharp is not a certification, it's more of a rating system. It's meant to upgrade ECE. So Sharp will go in and take an ECE rated uh, helmet and add a few more barrage of tests and speeds and things like that to see, uh, to basically upgrade that certification for the ECE. So then what ends up happening is you can always get your ECE helmet, look it up, see if it's been sharp tested and if it has you can also see the different uh, areas that they've tested and and where it's good and bad it's actually kind of cool it's based on a five star system so it's a, the sharp is an upgrade to the ECE now what is this big like dilemma this hullabaloo of uh, get an ECE rated helmet let me tell you what I think it is since DOT is not confirmed that you your helmet has actually been tested if you get an ECE DOT helmet it's like you're covering your bases you have a helmet that's definitely been tested for sure but then you have a helmet that meets higher and lower speed um, crash ratings which is uh, pretty good 